Quentin is collecting water to test it for dissolved oxygen. We breathe oxygen from the air, but the water organisms use oxygen that's dissolved in the water. The amount of dissolved oxygen, or DO in water, can vary. For example, warm water holds less oxygen than colder water. The dissolved oxygen test actually takes about 30 minutes to do. We're just going to show you the process at several points. Hannah started by adding two reagents. After shaking the bottle, she will let it settle two times. After the second settle, we add a third reagent. A yellowish brown color indicates that oxygen is present. Now we need to know how much oxygen is there. Yeah, that's all. And then stop running. Vigorous. Got it. Quentin is taking a small bit of the sample to test. He'll count how many drops of indicator it takes to turn this sample clear. Four, five, and then mix it again. It took 10 drops of the indicator. The number of drops is equal to the DO concentration. So we can say that today, the dissolved oxygen in this water sample is 10 milligrams per liter. It looks like all the listed organisms here would be okay today. As the summer warms up, we will likely find some days with less DO in the water. The warmer the temperature, the less oxygen it can hold. How does oxygen get into the water? Turbulence can mix air with water, as at a rapids. Water plants give off some oxygen as well. Some oxygen gets dissolved in at the surface of the river. The biggest influence on dissolved oxygen is temperature. Humans influence the temperature of surface water when they create conditions for increased erosion. Water with dirt in it absorbs more heat. River banks with no trees or bushes are more likely to erode. Even when there are trees, big pulses of water during storms can erode banks. Water that's unshaded absorbs more heat. In rainstorms, runoff water picks up heat from impervious surfaces like pavements and roofs and carries the heated water into the streams. Slowing stormwater and reducing erosion helps the watershed.